how do you drill an angled hole freehand? Now by angled, I mean to a specific angle. Anybody can just tilt a drill and then bore a hole. But how do you accurately hold it at that angle so that it is repeatable across multiple holes? And by freehand, I mean with a handheld drill. I see videos about making angled drilling jigs that start out using a drill press. I'm assuming you don't have a drill press or a table saw for that matter. The only power tool I'm going to use in this demonstration is a handheld drill. And the techniques that make this possible were actually developed hundreds of years ago by chair makers. Because chair makers require very precise compound angles. And sometimes these have to align through multiple parts, maybe through the crest and then through the arm and then into the seat. That all has to line up and sometimes on two different axes. For centuries, these angles have been bored by hand. And I'm going to show you a couple ways to do it so you can choose the one that you're most comfortable with. The first method is to angle the work itself. So let's say I need a 60 degree hole. Instead of tilting the drill to 60 degrees, why not tilt your workpiece instead? This is one of the many things these little angle blocks are good for. I'll link to a good source below if you want to grab one. Now, I can bore straight down just by keeping the drill plumb. Believe it or not, it isn't that difficult to hold a drill plumb if you put your body over it and you just take your time. But if you do need some more assistance, some power drills have a bubble on the back. As long as the bubble is in the center, the drill is plumb. If your drill doesn't have a bubble, you can buy a simple bubble level for a couple of bucks and you can temporarily attach it with some double-sided tape or some hot melt glue to the drill. Another way to keep your power drill plumb is to utilize another chair maker's trick. Stand something square nearby. It could be a tri-square like this or simply a scrap of wood that has a 90 degree edge. Now you can align your drill bit to that square edge by sight. This will get you square along one axis. The addition of a second guide can help you align the drill on the other axis. So by sighting back and forth along these two axes, you can align your drill straight at the start of the hole and you can keep it on that path the whole time. If you're working with a larger workpiece though that can't be held in a vise, you can still use these same techniques to tilt the drill itself to whatever angle you need with a high level of accuracy. Traditionally, adjustable squares or bevel gauges were used for that purpose, but there's no reason why you couldn't cut your scraps to the angle you need in a piece of wood. Now notice how the wood keeps the drill at the angle I need, while the tri-square, or another block of wood, keeps it straight along the other axis. Sighting an angle like this is much easier, of course, if you have a long drill bit. In fact, the longer the bit, the better. But you can do this with even small bits if you use an extension. Just make sure the bit is well seated so it remains in line with the shaft. Now, you can sight your angle much easier and more accurately. In fact, you can even place your guide right against the extension's shaft to lock it in place while you work. The edge of this single wood guide may also be used to keep the extension straight on the other axis by holding it in the center of that edge. If these tricks are precise enough for the compound angles chair makers require, they will serve you well in your shop too. Now you want to see something else interesting? At first glance, you may be taken aback by the tool's stunning form or its exceptional heirloom quality. But the most common phrase heard in the workshops of Bridge City tool users across the world is, huh, why didn't I think of that? Clever ideas, innovative features, uncompromising quality. Visit bridgecitytools.com today to see for yourself.